This is the mini lecture for the first unit of advanced topics in governmental accounting. And the topic is looking at how the GASB re-examines its existing standards. The GASB re-examines its existing standards because it believes that its job is more than just establishing or amending standards and kind of throwing them out there and saying, here, you know, do with them as you uh, see fit and uh, don't call us, uh, we'll call you. The GASB believes it should be maintaining those standards to ensure that over time they continue to meet their stated objectives, they're being applied properly by governments, uh, they are appropriately capturing the economic substance of the transactions that they address, because transactions evolve and change over time, uh, sometimes because of the accounting standards. They uh, acquire new features that sometimes are intended uh, to uh, get around the accounting standards or are affected by what a government is required to report about that transaction. Uh, and lastly, but certainly not least, uh, that the pronouncement continues to result in the provision of information that people need in order to make decisions and to assess government accountability. If you look at GASB's uh, uh, recent output in terms of statements, you'll see that many of them uh, have been the result of re-examination projects. Uh, these are probably uh, all of them, I think, uh, since 2008, and there's some pretty significant existing pronouncements that they took on, fund balance, the reporting entity, pensions and OPEB, fair value, fiduciary activities, uh, leases, those are all really significant pronouncements that uh, uh, governments have or will uh, be putting uh, a tremendous amount of effort into applying and it will make very significant changes in the standards. Uh, if you look at the GASB's uh, existing uh, current technical agenda, uh, you'll see that uh, uh, one of the two conceptual framework projects on there is a re-examination uh, project, um, that uh, all three of the major projects, uh, that is uh, the reporting model, public-private partnerships, and revenue and expense recognition are re-examinations. Uh, two of the eight uh, practice issues uh, conduit debt obligations and deferred compensation plans or re-examinations of prior standards. Uh, and all three of the topics that the GASB is currently conducting pre-agenda research on are re-examinations, compensated absences, uh, disclosures about going concern, uh, and uh, prior period adjustments, uh, including accounting changes, error corrections, and so on. And then in GASB's technical plan, you'll see that you know, there's also another 23 potential re-examination projects that would address existing standards. Uh, you know, the, the GASB's uh, policy is that once a pronouncement has been fully effective for at least five years, it's eligible to be re-examined. Often, it takes much longer than that. For instance, the Deferred Compensation Plan project that the board just added in December of 2018 uh, uh, it relates to Statement 32, which was effective in fiscal years 1998 and 1999, so almost 20 years ago. I already touched upon this earlier, but uh, to restate it uh, in terms of the objectives of a re-examination of existing standards, uh, the GASB is looking at whether the standards uh, have achieved their stated objectives, uh, whether they are producing decision useful information, information that can be used to hold governments accountable, uh, looking at a comparison between the costs of applying the standards and the benefits that result from them, uh, and also looking to see if any issues have arisen in terms of how the standards are applied, if governments are continuing to apply them appropriately, and whether uh, they, they are actually capturing uh, the transaction uh, as it's now occurring. In broad strokes, uh, a re-examination uh, you know, of a major pronouncement 
uh, will begin not long after governments have implemented it. Uh, GASB will uh, do what it refers to as post-implementation review or PIR phase one, uh, where it will collect information uh, from a random selection of governments that have implemented the standards uh, and then reach out to them and ask them for information about uh, the effort and cost associated with applying those standards while it's still fresh in their minds. Uh, and then some time after the pronouncement has been effective for at least five years, uh, the GASB will uh, add a, uh, a pre-agenda research activity and do things such as roundtables, uh, interviews, surveys, and so on in order to collect information to answer those questions or to meet those objectives of a re-examination. In somewhat more detail, uh, I give you an example of the financial reporting model re-examination uh, that uh, we are discussing in this first unit. Uh, before that project was added to the current agenda, the, the GASB staff conducted uh, about two years worth of research that uh, included a literature review, which almost every research project, even those that aren't re-examinations, uh, involve at the GASB, where we're looking at the standards uh, of other standard setters, uh, looking at academic research in, in, in peer-reviewed journals, looking at articles in professional publications. Uh, archival research is almost always a part of uh, the research. We're looking at randomly selected uh, uh, financial reports uh, and examining the information in them. Uh, for the financial reporting model research, uh, the GASB looked at 465 governments of various sizes and types that were randomly selected uh, and looking at the various parts of the reporting model from statement 34 and, uh, and other financial state and other GASB statements that uh, provide uh, the, the requirements for the reporting model. Um, we then uh, conducted research roundtables, uh, 11 of them in eight different cities, a total of 144 uh, stakeholders participated, roughly e equally divided between preparers, auditors, and users of financial statements, uh, and of, uh, of various types within those, not just one type of preparer, but preparers from state governments, local governments, counties, school districts, business type activities, and so on, auditors inside government and uh, in state auditors' offices, and also uh, auditors and CPA firms of various sizes, from local firms to big four firms, uh, and then for users, uh, different types of people in the municipal bond industry, uh, citizen groups, taxpayer associations, uh, legislators and legislative staff, oversight bodies, and so on. Uh, the research roundtables are very foundational types of research where. In fact, we did in this research ask incredibly basic questions about the reporting model. For instance, uh, about government-wide government, government -wide financial statements, which were introduced by Statement 34, we said, w basically, what are the positive and negative aspects of government-wide financial statements? In order to identify what issues there might be in practice that we should look at more closely in surveys and interviews. The next round of research then was surveys. Uh, we did four separate surveys, one of preparers in general, uh, uh, one specifically related to the use of the modified approach uh, for reporting infrastructure, and then a separate uh, survey of auditors and of users. And the, the questions were very similar, but phrased differently because of the different perspectives that those type of stakeholders bring uh, to the table. And then that was followed up by in-depth interviews of one to two hours each with 148 uh, stakeholders of various types, again, just as in the roundtables. Uh, and, uh, and that allowed us to uh, really dig deep uh, into the things that we had heard at the roundtables and through the surveys and seen in the literature review and the archival research and start to uh, pursue potential solutions to addressing those issues that had come up. All of the results were gathered together in a research memorandum that was presented to the members of the board uh, and discussed in a public meeting with them. Uh, and then the staff uh, prepared a project prospectus uh, with a recommendation in this case to add a project uh, to the technical agenda to address specific aspects of the reporting model, not to start over and, and come up with a new one by any means, 
uh, and that prospectus is, uh, was discussed in a public meeting, and the board agreed to uh, add uh, that project, which uh, they've now been working on for a couple of years, uh, and most recently, in September of last year, issued a preliminary views, which is the subject of this unit. With that, uh, that gives you a, a basic idea of how and why the board uh, looks at uh, existing standards and re-examines their effectiveness.